Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher who flips furniture on the side in order to earn a profit to put straight toward my student loan debt. I am here today picking up a dresser that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I am getting this dresser for $20, so let's go check it out and see if we've got ourselves a new project. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, before we get to cleaning though, I'm gonna remove the hardware. I'm gonna keep this hardware, but again, I'm gonna be replacing it for these pieces specifically. These are gonna go in my stash. All right, I've got my crud cutter for this cleaning. Give you guys a better look of this. Just crud cutter, tough task. Smells not too bad either. And it just really gets everything clean, gets all that dirt and dust off because we want the paint to adhere to the furniture and not the dust and dirt. All right, so now I'm just going back through with some clean water and going to wipe away all of the chemicals. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a paper towel, dry everything off, and then I'm gonna do a light scuff sand and put a little bit of wood filler for when I replace the hardware. You wanna make sure that your material is dry before you sand it down because the wetness will just really eat away um, if you put that sandpaper on it. All right, and we're ready to scuff sand now. All right, I am going to go ahead and take my 100 grit sandpaper and do a little light scuff sanding on the drawers and on the pieces so that the paint can grip on to something. Before I scuff sand the rest of the drawers, I'm gonna get some Dixie mud and fill in these two holes because I'm actually gonna be making it a single piece of hardware instead of a double. And since I did some Dixie mud over there on the drawer, I'm also going to do some right here to fill this hole. That way later on there won't be any notice of it. All right, it's time to use some primer. I'm gonna get some use out of my lidless boss. I just usually put a saran wrap over it to keep the air out and to keep it um, moist. And then it is blocking odors, stains, and the stops the bleed through. And the reason that I am going to put white boss instead of clear boss is because I'm going to be using a light color and I wanna make the wood lighter instead of brown, which is dark, because I don't wanna to have to use as many coats of the actual paint when I'm painting it the new color. I'm 
All five drawers really are slanting down on one side and so this is the only thing that I really saw that was wrong and since these wheels are riveted in instead of being screwed in and being able to be replaced that's why I have to replace the whole drawer slide instead of just replacing the wheel. So we kind of got unlucky on this one, but each set was about $5, so that's about $25 more. Right now we're in at about $70, so that's all right. We'll still be able to earn a good profit. All right, all five rows are all in, and so that means that I'm gonna be actually waiting to put the drawers in until tomorrow once the paint is all dry, but the boss is dry now. So I'm gonna take my hand sander. It's a very fine grit, but I just want to kind of smooth out the boss before I do my first coat of paint. We're ready to paint. We are gonna be using soft pink. I've been kind of wanting to do a pink project for a while now and I finally broke down, got some pink from Dixie Belle. So their soft pink is gonna be pretty bold for me. It's not a bold color, but it's a very particular color and it's gonna take a very particular customer and buyer to buy this set but i'm excited about it i really think it'll look cute in some little girls room so i'm that's kind of what my target market is for this piece but who knows and for brushes i'm going to be using the two inch wedge brush from zebra and then i'm going to also be using the zebra two inch angled brush let's get started painting Remember, with a chalk paint, um, any chalk paint, as long as it's water-based, you can use water with it. And the chalk paint seems to get a little bit thicker and just come a little bit thicker. And so in order to get that smoother look, you want to kind of water down your paint and water down your brush and even spray a little bit on your piece. Uh, you don't have to have a water sprayer. I've done past videos and past pieces where I've just mixed water and paint together in a separate container, but I finally was able to get my hands on a continuous sprayer from Dixie Belle and it's already changed the way that I paint and I love it. So I'm gonna use this to spray onto my brush just a little bit and then spray onto the piece just a tad bit. Don't want any drips from it. And then I'm just gonna get to painting.
so just finishing up the first coat of the soft pink and it's it's I love it um, I didn't know if I was gonna like it but I really do like it um, it is gonna need another coat I'm hoping only just one uh, but it's a really light color. Uh, but I'm really glad that I also used the white boss before because if I would have just slapped on the pink to the brown, that would have been a big mistake because the brown would have popped right through the pink and we would have had to probably do three, four, five coats to get full coverage. And of course, I don't want to be using up too much of my paint and so the less the better this was full this is really great coverage with such a small amount of paint used so again with these dixie bell paints you are able to get so much more coverage we are going to let this dry overnight and i'm going to come back tomorrow for a second coat and a top coat and then i get to install the hardware all right, it's a beautiful day. So we moved outside again and I'm gonna get the second coat on of the soft pink. Hopefully it's only gonna need two coats. Then we'll be able to do the top coat. second coat was enough. There were a couple areas where I had to do just some touch-ups, but I got that done and now I'm ready for the top coat. And it's clear coat in flat, which is just a matte finish. There's going to be no shine, no sheen to it. And the reason I want to do this is because of the hardware that I chose. It's more of a matte finish as well and so I wanted that to kind of partner with each other and I don't really like the shininess so we're gonna get the flat on it. All right, the flat top coat is all finished. That's got to dry. And while it's drying on the rest of the pieces, I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom drawer of the nightstand. And then I'm going to be putting the hardware in. All right, so the drawer on the flat part is about 16 
and a half inches. So I'm gonna do eight and three quarters. And we're just gonna drill a hole straight down in. Easy as that. Now let's get the hardware on and put the drawers in. Surprise on the hardware, it's gold. Ooh, and the drawer racks, the slides are shaping up to be perfect. This is no longer uneven, which I'm so thankful about. I was a little bit nervous. We are ready for staging. Little Lauren. The gold really makes the brushed gold hardware kind of pop. So we kind of tied that in a little bit. We're making it look like it could be long in a girl's room. Um, again, the gold accents make the hardware pop and just making it really kid friendly and so that someone can imagine it in their own home in maybe their little girl's room. So now I'm gonna take some photos to post on the Facebook Marketplace. For this dresser specifically, I did have to go back and kind of tinker with the slides that I had replaced. I had screwed them into the same holes that the previous slides were screwed into. The drawers just still seemed to be pretty slanted and it was really bothering me. And I am learning more and more that the more time and effort and just care that I put into my pieces, the more that I can then sell them for and the better that they look in the end. So I finally got them to be straight and now there's not so many gaps. I'm really pleased with the way that they turned out. I kind of went in on this project a little bit more than I usually do. So I got this dresser for $20 and I got this nightstand for $15, so that's $35 together. Because I wanted to replace the hardware, I got all of the hardware. I got a set of 25, but I only used 10, so I spent about $10 on that. So there goes $45 plus another 25 for um, the drawer slides and then about $10 in materials. So that is $80 that I am in on this project. So I'm gonna list it on Facebook Marketplace for $280 and that would give me a pretty good profit. And we'll see how long this takes to sell. I've never done a pink set. Um, we'll see how much interest we get, but I'll let you know soon. Well, I had a buyer. About two hours after I posted it, someone messaged me and was interested in the set for her granddaughter and she was asking me all these questions where was it located and if i took venmo and measuring to see if it would fit in her car and then after she was literally about to be on her way and almost going to venmo me 
she contacted her daughter and then she messaged me back and she said, I'm so sorry. I just checked with her and she actually already got a set yesterday. So needless to say, I was a little bit bummed, but it does go to show you that a buyer will be out there. All it takes is one. I have to keep reminding myself of that. And I also want to remind you guys of that. This is out there. Okay. This is going to be in a particular kid's bedroom and it might not just sell in a day. Obviously it's not selling in a day. So even though I wasn't able to sell it before the video, maybe this video helped you figure out how you can flip your child's dresser and nightstand or something similar along these lines. And it doesn't have to be pink. You could pick a different color, but I just wanted to show you how quick and easy this could be. This was a one, maybe two day project and it was a quick flip. So the results are awesome. I hope you guys learned something. And the story of this dresser set is not over. So head over to my Instagram at Furniture Flipping Teacher and I will be continuing to update you guys on this set and let you know when it sells. So give me a follow over there. Also, we will be posting videos on YouTube every Monday and Thursday. So be sure to tune in, get subscribed down below if you wanna keep following along on my journey of flipping furniture to sell for profit to put straight toward my student loan debt and I'll see you on the flip side.